Hello, welcome to Inside the Summit League. Happy spring to you. We're trying to get there uh, anyway in the Dakotas where we are. Plenty of baseball and softball coming up on the show. Omaha is your early league leader in both of those sports right now. But we still have one Summit League basketball team to keep track of. The South Dakota women still going at it in the WNIT. The Coyotes beat Creighton in the first round of the tournament. They beat Minnesota at Minnesota in the second round and then on Thursday night in Vermillion they beat Northern Iowa in the quarterfinals. Uh, UNI beat USD by 21 points way back in November. It was the second game of the season for South Dakota but totally different outcome this time although Northern Iowa did get out to a three-point lead at halftime. South Dakota takes the lead briefly in the third quarter but the game is tied at 37 going into the fourth quarter. The Coyotes take a one-point lead on a bucket by Taya He Miller, and USD leads by one in the final seconds. Northern Iowa would get a three-point shot off at the buzzer, but South Dakota hangs on, and they beat a very good UNI team by one, 51 to 50. So, on to the quarterfinals of the WNIT. On Sunday, USD hosting Western Kentucky. And the toppers coming in with 27 wins on the season. But Nicole Seacamp gets going early for the Coyotes. 18 points and 9 assists for Seacamp. End of the first quarter. Jasmine Trimboli from half court. Boom. South Dakota up by 8 at the end of the first quarter. And on their way. They lead by 2 at halftime. Coyotes take control in the second half of the game. They go up by 9 at the end of the third quarter on a 3 by Seacamp. They go up by 13 on a three by Caitlin Duffy, and the Yotes make 12 three-pointers in the game. They win it 68 to 54, and South Dakota fights through injuries and late season fatigue, and they beat another good team to get their 30th victory of the season. We've all kind of got that all-in mentality that makes us want to play every day. We want to go as far as we can. And, uh, you know, when we didn't win that uh, championship game up in Sioux Falls, we knew that the next goal was to kind of go all the way in the WNIT. You know, there's no reason why we'd ever go out to a game and kind of want to lose. So we're going to keep playing hard every game. And we trust each other that we're going to do that and play hard for each other. And uh, the results will take care of themselves. I mean, there's uh, clear evident signs of, of us fighting through some things. I mean, just the, the fact that Duffy's out on the floor today and, and um, we've just had lots of, lots of people kind of fighting through the, um, the things that you would expect that, that kind of bother you this time of year. But um, certainly something where I think it's just a testament to how much these girls just kind of enjoy uh, playing together and want to keep this thing rolling. You no, know, we work so hard to get to this point and we made it to the final four, so we might as well just finish it all out. <laughs> crowd is awesome here. They always have been, and I think they've really picked it up these last mm -hmm. few games. And I think that's uh, a huge plus for us, especially you know getting down to the end of the season. You know, up, you know we're getting kind of tired and stuff. So to have that kind of crowd, uh, you know, kind of encouraging us to keep pushing it out is definitely a benefit. And uh, I think that's a huge reason why we uh, play so well at home. Well, they have played excellent at home. 15-1 and one at home this year for South Dakota. And the one loss was to the University of Washington. Washington is playing in the NCAA Final Four this weekend. So in the WNIT, the Coyotes and Oregon in the semifinals on Wednesday. That game on USD's home court in Vermilion. Michigan and Florida Gulf Coast on the other side of the bracket. And that game is on Thursday. And the championship game in the WNIT coming up on Saturday. It will be televised live by CBS. CBS Sports Network. Well, Nicole Seacamp talked about the great crowds in Vermilion for these W or these WNIT games. That continues the trend for Summit League women's teams. I don't think we can overstate it enough or make a big enough deal out of it and didn't really at the time of the tournament, but fan support this year at the Summit League tournament was incredible. Attendance at the women's championship game this year between South Dakota and South Dakota State was 8,647. That blows away the numbers from the other major and mid-major conference uh, championship games, 1,600 more than they had uh, for UConn, not on their home floor, but uh, an hour away in their home state in Connecticut. We had 3,000 more than they had for the championship game in the ACC Women's Tournament and the Big Ten and the Pac-12 Women's Championship Games. Uh, phenomenal support for women's basketball again this year in the Summit League. Well, one other women's basketball note of note this week. South Dakota State, the uh, tournament champions in the Summit League, they have added a transfer from the University of Iowa. Tegan Larson 
will join the Jacks and sit out next season. Larson is from Sioux Falls, South Dakota. She played very sparingly this season as a freshman at Iowa, but Larson was a four-time All-State player and a national top 100 recruit when she came out of high school last year. And one other basketball reminder. Tomorrow night, Thursday night in Cypress, Texas, uh, just north of Houston, Fort Wayne's Max Landis will compete in the annual three-point shootout as part of the NCAA Final Four festivities. Landis was the Summer League Player of the Year this year. He set a new IPFW record with 125 three-pointers this season, so he will be one of eight shooters in the three-point shootout, and uh, that will air live on ESPN Thursday night. Up next, softball, Nicole Warren and the Omaha Mavericks take two from IUPUI in the opening weekend of Summit League play. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Grand Falls Casino and Golf Resort, Dakota Land Honda, and South Dakota Corn. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine and the Sioux Falls Convention and Visitors Bureau. Welcome back. The North Dakota State softball team not getting votes again this week in the National Coaches Top 25, but NDSU still the heavy favorite to win the Summit League regular season title this year. The uh, Bison have not played a league game yet, but they do get started uh, at IEPUI this weekend. In the meantime, South Dakota and Omaha with two wins in the opening weekend of league play, and they have the player and the pitcher of the week, Sidney Hancock at South Dakota is the player of the week, went seven for 10 in a three game set against Fort Wayne. She had four hits and three runs just in the first game of that series. Hancock had a home run in game two, and she drove in seven runs in the three games. Laura Rooker of Omaha is the pitcher of the week. Just a freshman, got a win and a save against IUPUI. She is second in the league right now with seven wins. And here is Rooker in action with the Mavs at home against IUPUI and Western Illinois at home in its Summit League opening series against South Dakota State. Gorgeous day in Macomb on Thursday for game one between Western Illinois and South Dakota State. Emily Ira Dillon for the Leathernecks had seven strikeouts in seven innings backed up by some leather from her teammates. Carissa Kuchis out in center field, fighting the sun and the rotation of the earth and everything else, and makes that grab. And then Tierney Botno at second base, snagging that. Ira goes seven innings, four hits, just one run allowed, and Western wins game one, four to one. Couple of big innings in game two. Tierney Botno drives in two runs with a single in the second inning. And Western Illinois gets five runs. They lead five to nothing until the top of the fifth inning. Lauren Churnside crushes that to left field. Christian McCone and Devin Larson score. Jack Rabbit's down five to three. And then Allie Herbliska follows up with a two-run home run that takes about two seconds to get out of the park. Jack's tied at five. SDSU scores nine runs in the fifth inning, and they win game two, nine to eight. And then on Sunday, a walk-off win for Western. Leathernecks down by a run in the bottom of the seventh inning. Rachel Beatty with a two-run double to win at eight to seven, and Western Illinois takes two out of three in the series. I just knew that I needed to get the job done. I try not to think about anything when I get in the box, so I just got up there and I looked for my pitch and I found my pitch, but I kept my mind clear. I have a lot of confidence in our team and we seem to be a team that really fights a lot at the end. And, you know, once we got through that inning, you know, I was hoping we'd win it in the top of the seventh, but then when it kind of got a little away from us, I was like, you know what, we're at a good spot in our lineup. It really didn't matter where we're at in our lineup. I was very confident with everybody. So, and then they just kind of, you know, executed the things that we needed to execute. And I just knew that once we got back in the, you know, in the dugout ready to hit we'd be ready to go. Meanwhile in Nebraska Omaha and IUPUI had their game on Saturday canceled by weather but they did get in two on Friday and the Mavericks win them both. Nicole Warren leads off the bottom of the first inning with a home run. She had two hits drove in two runs. Warren leads the league in homers with nine and an RBI with 28 right now. Pitcher of the week Laura Rooker gives up two solo homers but gets the win four to two Omaha in game one. In game two, tied 5-5 in the fourth inning. Sydney Hamus doubles into the corner. Kelly Patterson comes around to score. Mavericks get two in the inning. They take a 7-5 lead. 
But Maggie Good comes back in the top of the sixth inning with a two-run homer to tie the game at seven. Omaha gets an unearned run, though, in the bottom of the sixth inning to win at 8-7, and Omaha takes two from IEPUI. Baseball is coming up next. They have a boatload of new players this year at Oral Roberts, but can the Golden Eagles sail on to another Summit League championship? We'll take you to Tulsa and get some answers to that coming up next. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Grand Falls Casino and Golf Resort, Dakota Land Honda, and South Dakota Corn. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine and the Sioux Falls Convention and Visitors Bureau. Welcome back in baseball. Oral Roberts has won or shared the Summit League regular season championship and won the postseason tournament in 15 of the last 17 years. They didn't win it the other two years because they weren't in the Summit League in 2013 and 2014. But they returned last year and it was business as usual for ORU. It has been total dominance in the last two decades for the team from Tulsa. The Eagles beat IPFW in the league tournament championship last year. Matt Brandy with a home run in that game. Brandy is gone this year. So is Darian James, who was the Summit League Tournament Most Valuable Player. Oral Roberts loses the pitcher and the player of the year. And in total, they've got six guys who were first-team All-Summit League players last year who are not back this year. But... They've got an all-league catcher and an all-league third baseman and a really good starting pitcher in Bryce Howell, who is just a sophomore, who is back this year. They've also got 20 new guys on the roster. And here is head coach Ryan Fulmer on what he has to work with this season at Oral Roberts. Well, I think if you, if you had a choice, I don't think you'd want to have that kind of turnover. But uh, there's a lot of good things that come with that turnover, too. Number one, it means you had a lot of good players in your program a year before and you lose it. A lot of those guys for a good reason. I think the second thing is it provides a lot of opportunity for guys to return in your program. So uh, we feel really good about the guys that we do return, uh, providing some leadership. I think the, the only unknown right now is some of the experience part of it. Uh, but we're excited for those guys to, to, to kind of get their feet wet and get a part of it. Um, and I think uh, we're going to be pleasantly surprised by the experience that develops here over the next 20 games with some of those young guys. You know, we feel good about our depth going into it. We have a lot of good pieces. We have a lot of good players. I think uh, you know the, the, the big thing this time of year is to find out how all those pieces are going to come together, are going to fit together. How those roles get defined over the next couple weeks is going to be crucial in our development. So we have a lot of guys we feel comfortable in those roles. We just kind of got to let things play out and work themselves out. But uh, you know, there's going to be five or six guys that get an opportunity to fit right into that rotation. I don't know that you can ever go into a season and, and kind of predict that or, or, or go out on a limb and say that. but. Uh, we feel good about the guys we got coming in. We feel good about the guys we're returning, including Matt and uh, Nick Rourke and Noah Cummings, some young guys that, uh, that had huge roles. You combine that with Chase Stafford and, and, and Rolando Martinez, who both were 300 hitters a year ago, and you combine some new guys in, we feel like are really talented as well. So uh, we like our lineup. We like our pieces. We need a lot of experience. We know these first 20 games are going to be crucial in our development. And, Kind of excited to get going. You no, know, it's hard to say. I think you can kind of make an argument either way. I think what it does do is it allows you to get outside a lot more and get more live at bats than you normally would on a, on a given year where you have some weather issues. But, um, you know, I don't know that it, it's an advantage one way or the other. It's good that we haven't missed a day, and, and I know we're not the only ones that have, have had good weather, but. Uh, you know, we've been fortunate to this point to get out every day and not miss a day, so I only think that helps speed up the development. Just, you know, I think, you know, when you're in the position that we're in, uh, you go play those games for a lot of reasons. Number one, they're, they're, they're great games to play, they're fun games to play, uh, and the second part of that, it, it prepares you for what you're going to have to do late in the year. You know, we know we need to win our league, we know we need to win our conference tournament, and, uh, you know, we try to prepare likewise throughout the year. So you'll see uh, those early weekends are extremely difficult. Every midweek game we play is extremely uh, tough. So uh, I think guys enjoy playing those games. We enjoy coaching those games. And it only makes you better in the long run. Yeah, it's good. I think uh, it provides valuable experience for those guys that return to return to get that taste of postseason play and what it's like. And, 
know, hopefully we can build on that and, and we feel like we have a club that can, that can return and do those kind of things. Well, ORU is off to a 4-2 and two start in Summit League play, but Cole Gruber and Omaha have done them one better so far. Back with baseball highlights and the Players of the Week next. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Grand Falls Casino and Golf Resort, Dakota Land Honda, and South Dakota Corn. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine and the Sioux Falls Convention and Visitors Bureau. Welcome back. Omaha has turned out to be a yearly contender in Summit League Baseball. The Mavericks won back-to-back -back Summit League regular season titles in 2013 and 14. Kind of took a step back last year and finished fourth in the league, but they are off to a 5-1 and one start in league play so far this year. Omaha senior Cole Gruber is the player of the week. He leads the league in batting right now with a 427 average. He's the only guy over 400 right now. Gruber hit 700 last week as the Mavs won two out of three against North Dakota State. Gruber went four for four in the second game of Sunday's doubleheader against the Bison. He stole two bases, scored five runs just in that game alone. Western Illinois senior Joe Mortiaro is the pitcher of the week. He went six innings, gave up just three hits, struck out a career high 11 batters against South Dakota State on Saturday. And here are some highlights from that series, as well as Oral Roberts taking on the University of Oklahoma and IPFW. Oral Roberts has already beaten Wichita State and Auburn and top 15 Mississippi State this year. And you can add Oklahoma to the list now. Sophomore pitcher Kale Timms goes six and two-thirds innings to get the win for Oral Roberts. Matt Watley with a double and a triple. And the Golden Eagles beat the Sooners five to nothing. Three days later, though, Fort Wayne comes into Tulsa and takes game one of their series against Oral Roberts. Six different guys for Fort Wayne with two hits apiece in this game, and the Mastodons win game one, six to three. Golden Eagles take the next two, though. Matt Watley again with a home run. Oral Roberts with just five hits in the game, but they win game two, five to two. And ORU out hits IPFW 13 to one in game three as the Eagles win that one, 15 to nothing. In Macomb, Western Illinois and South Dakota State. Good one in game one on Friday. Luke Ringhofer doing it on D behind the plate for the Jackrabbits. Aaron Michael on the mound for Western Illinois. Goes five innings, strikes out six to get the win. Adam McGinnis with an RBI single in the fourth inning. Connor Courier scores his second run of the game. And the Leathernecks win game one, three to two. South Coast State takes game two, 11 to three. And then here in game three, another good one for the home team. Pitcher of the week, Joe Mortolaro with the sweet red glove. Mowing him down, he gets Paul Jacobson swinging. Connor Courier backing up his pitcher over at first base. Takes a hit away from Nick Smith. Ricky DeGrusha comes in in relief, keeps the Jackrabbits down with a couple of strikeouts in his one inning of work. He gets the save. Mortolaro gets the win. Two to nothing Western in game three and coaches love winning pitchers duels. So that's as good as Joe's thrown. Um, he attacked the whole game and uh, you know he just kept hammering away and then Millie did a good job and then Ricky comes in and then you still got Westfall there if you need to bring him in too but you know we're moving guys around right now you know we're kind of walking wounded right now but that's okay we're finding ways to win and that's the most important thing you know and, and to put a shut up, up in game three that's hard to do you know and I, I give our pitchers and our defense a ton of credit because we stayed with it and obviously that's a, a low scoring game from their guys a good arm, you know, there's a reason he goes on on game three for them too, because he gives them a chance to win when he goes out there too. Up next, big honors for four track and field runners and vaulters as they were voted as Summit League Indoor Athletes of the Year. And a stirring victory in tennis for the guys at IUPUI. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Grand Falls Casino and Golf Resort, Dakota Land Honda, and South Dakota Corn. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine and the Sioux Falls Convention and Visitors Bureau. Well, we are 
On now to the outdoor track and field season, but the votes are in from the Summit League head coaches on the indoor athletes of the year. And in a choice that Mr. Obvious would approve of, Aaron Teschuk of North Dakota State is the Women's Track Athlete of the Year for the second straight year. Teschuk was ranked in the top five in the nation in both the mile and the 3,000 meters this year. She won the mile at the Summit League Indoor Championships and broke the league record by more than 23 seconds in the 3,000 meters. The field athlete of the year for the women is Emily Grove from the University of South Dakota. She won her second title in the pole vault at the league championships and Grove earned first team All-American honors with a seventh place finish at the NCAA championships. She held the third highest height in the nation this year with a 14 foot nine and a half inch effort at the Iowa State Classic. The men's honorees are both from Oral Roberts. Israel Nelson is the track man of the year. Just a freshman, but he won four hurdle events in his first college season. Nelson ran the fourth fastest time in the country in the 60 meter hurdles this year. He was the lone Summer League men's representative at the NCAA Indoor Track Championships. And his ORU teammate, Justin Estala, is the field athlete of the year. He won his second Summer League Championship in the pole vault and finished 10th at the NCAA Field Championships. Estala won five times during the indoor regular season. And finally this week in tennis, it was an early season win against a Division III team, a really good Division III team called Case Western Reserve, but it was dramatic and it was thrilling and it was fun and it comes down to the last match. Six foot five sophomore Bradley Luschwager Pulls out a 6-7, 7-6, 6-3 victory, and you gotta celebrate while you can. We'll see you next week on Inside the Summit League.